Welcome back. Despite healthy lifestyles, cardiovascular disease remains the leading cause of death in the U.S. New research suggests inflammation plays a key role in heart health. A low-dose medication traditionally used for gout shows promise in reducing arterial plaque and potentially reversing heart disease. Here now is the cardiologist and program director at Harbor UCLA Medical Center, Dr. Matthew Budoff. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh, well, thank you for having me on. Of course. So to start things off, for our viewers who may not be 100% sure, can you tell us what exactly is inflammation and how does it contribute to the development of heart disease? Yeah, so inflammation is the same thing we get when we get arthritis or joint pain. It, it's uh, cells that aggravate the, the heart and uh, can aggravate the, the different joints, but it can also aggravate the heart and the vessels in the heart. And when the vessels in the heart get aggravated, they can get more plaque buildup and that plaque can break off and cause a heart attack or a stroke. So the inflammation in the heart is just as dangerous as, or just as, as destructive as, as inflammation in joints or other places. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And so when it comes to the conversations about heart disease prevention, inflammation isn't something that is, you know, normally discussed. So can you tell us a little bit about how do you think that inflammation is overlooked in these mainstream conversations? Yeah, you know, we've been focusing so much on cholesterol, for example, blood pressure, and those are important. Diabetes control, people to, to quit smoking or to exercise more. And all of those are good cardiac uh, interventions to make people live longer and healthier lives. But inflammation is now part of the, the discussion or should be part of the discussion. And we need to think about people who have inflammation, and it's just a simple blood test to figure it out. But if you have inflammation that can be causing heart damage, there are now treatments available. Once again, thank you for sharing. My next question was going to be, are there any particular tests you can um, get done to know that you have inflammation? So aside from a blood test, is there anything else that our viewers should know? I, I think it's, it's just asking your doctor that the blood test is called C-reactive protein or CRP. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple blood test. It's very inexpensive. It's widely available. And it'll tell you if that's elevated that would suggest that you have inflammation that could be causing damage to the arteries and that maybe you should be considering other therapies. And how exactly does inflammation differ from other commonly, commonly discussed risk, risk factors like high blood pressure or high cholesterol? Yeah, so, you know, um, uh, hopefully down the road we'll be discussing this similarly or equally, but when we talk about cholesterol medications or cholesterol, we want to get the cholesterol down because cholesterol feeds the arteries. It causes the plaque buildup in those blood vessels, and that's really critically important for, for people to, to prevent. Blood pressure causes a lot of damage, not only to the heart, but to the kidneys, to the brain. Strokes are common in people whose blood pressure is uncontrolled. So we want to control the cholesterol and the blood pressure, but now we can also think about controlling the inflammation as kind of a third arm of prevention. You have to keep in mind that the number one cause of death for men and women in the United States is heart disease still. So more than all cancers combined, people are dying of heart disease, and, and we can now have another tool to help us prevent some of those deaths, hopefully. That is such... Um... That's such a significant statistic when you put it that way. Out of all the cancers combined, and still heart disease remains to be number one. That When you look at those numbers, it really is astonishing. Now, I'm reading here a little bit about an Extrom trial. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so what we did is we took patients and we took pictures of their heart with a CT scanner. We, we, we got how much plaque they had in their arteries, how much buildup of of cholesterol and other things they had in the arteries. And then we put them on either colchicine, a low dose medication uh, once a day, or uh, placebo, no, no active therapy, and followed them for a year. And at the end of one year, we took another set of pictures of their heart to see if the plaque got better or worse or didn't change. And what we found is that in those patients who were on the low dose colchicine, they had less plaque buildup than those patients who are on placebo or no active therapy. So we saw that colchicine added to other therapies helps slow down the plaque buildup in the arteries and in some patients even induced regression. In other words, they had less plaque in their arteries than a year earlier. 
That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. And can you tell us what exactly makes this trial significant in the world of cardiovascular research? And how is this, how are you going to take this newfound information implemented further? Yeah, so, you know, we think that this adds to a growing body of literature that suggests that inflammation is not only bad for the arteries, but can be treated. For a long time, we just thought, oh, if you have inflammation, you have inflammation and maybe take some Motrin or take some, some uh, you know, naprosin or some type of anti-inflammatory medicine and just try to, to, to quiet it. But now we know we can actively treat inflammation. And the same is true for active diseases such as lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. We now have drugs that are really good at targeting inflammation. So for the heart now, we have this medicine called colchicine. It's uh, low dose. And the interesting thing is this drug has been around for decades because it's been used for other diseases like gout. Gout has been, colchicine has been used for gout for decades. So we're now repurposing this therapy in a low dose once a day for patients to help prevent heart problems. Thank you. And now let's talk about medications like statins and how do they compare to colchicine when it comes to reducing cardiovascular risk? Yeah, so, you know, statins, we, we have uh, uh, two properties that at least we think are really important. One, they lower the cholesterol. Cholesterol is the building block for, for plaque buildup in the arteries. And many patients with high cholesterol uh, can get their, 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 their cholesterol lowered very effectively with statins. Statins also have a little bit of an effect on inflammation. So they actually have two different ways that they help prevent heart attacks, strokes, and cardiovascular death. Colchicine works on the inflammation side more, and it adds to the statin to give it more, more power. So you can take colchicine with or without a statin if you're not a believer in the statins or if your doctor doesn't think you need a statin, but you have inflammation, we still have colchicine available as a, as a good add-on therapy for you. You're ahead of the game. My next question was going to be, can you take it on top of a statin? Can they work together? Or, you know, what would that look like if you do take the two of them together? So once again, thank you for clarifying that. Now, can you tell us if there are any risks to taking um, colchicine on a, on a daily basis? Yeah, so this is very low dose, much lower dose than we use for other diseases like gout, like I mentioned earlier. But um, there is a little bit, some people do get a little bit of diarrhea. Um, if, you, if you get that side effect, you stop the colchicine and it goes away within a day. Mm -hmm. So it's usually nothing too major. And there's no other major side effects that we see from colchicine. So it seems like a very safe and effective treatment. And now, how might this discovery change the way doctors approach heart disease prevention going forward? Well, yeah, so I think like now we're going to be, you know, we have our, what I used to call the ABCs. A is, is taking a low dose aspirin if you, if you need it. B is blood pressure. C is cholesterol. Now we can also think about adding inflammation into that, into that alphabet and, and seeing if we need to treat inflammation. And if so, we now have this new therapy or this old therapy that's being repurposed to help us in that battle against heart disease. And also, what do the findings suggest about the future role of inflammation management in cardiology? So I, I think the um, I think the the implications are going to be that they're going to make its way. It's already into our some of our guidelines on how to practice cardiology, but I think it's going to be more widespread. I think we're gonna we're gonna start using this more routinely in patients who are not only high risk, but patients who've already had maybe a heart attack or a stroke to try to prevent a second heart attack or a second stroke. And I think that's gonna be where, where the next studies are gonna be hopefully and where, where the development of, of incorporating the studies that, that I've done and many others have done to help move this field forward. Thank you for sharing that. And so for our viewers, especially those who believe they're doing everything right, what do you want them to take away from this study and from these new findings? Yeah, I would just say that, you know, uh, Check if, if, you're, if you have inflammation. Next time you get a blood test, no, no rush. But if you're, if you're getting your cholesterol checked or your, your kidneys checked or something, and you're going for blood testing anyway, maybe see if your doctor can add on this C-reactive protein. And if you do have inflammation, just talk to your doctor about whether or not uh, therapies would be appropriate to help reduce that inflammation so it doesn't cause more heart disease. Thank you. And just one last question as we're coming up on the end of our segment. Is there a particular website that people can go to to learn more about inflammation, culture scene, and the trial results? 
Yeah, so we put everything on one website. It's called cvdinflammation.com. So all one word, cvdinflammation.com. Great. Thank you so much, doctor, for sitting down with us this morning. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more open right after this.